Right friends, welcome back to question and answer sixth session. I hope you enjoyed all the five sessions and we are going to discuss 24 questions in this session. First question is the increasing cash reserve ratio from time to time by Reserve Bank of India will lead to what is cash reserve ratio? It is as per Reserve Bank of India Act, Reserve Bank of India Act 1934. Certain percentage of money is to be kept in cash form. Certain percentage of money is to be kept with the Reserve Bank of India in cash form. That is cash reserve ratio. If it is increased, what will happen? More cash will go to Reserve Bank of India. When CRR is increased, what will happen? More cash will go to Reserve Bank of India. Then what will happen? as more cash will go to Reserve Bank of India because Reserve Bank of India is not paying any interest on CRR. Then the amount for lending will be reduced for the banks. That means when CRR is increased, it will lead to reduction in lendable resources by banks. When CRR is increased, it will result in decrease in lendable resources by banks decrease in lendable resources by banks and when CRR is reduced, it will result in increase in lendable resources for banks. That means profitability will increase for banks. If CRR is reduced, CRR is mandatory as per RBI Act 1934 and SLR is mandatory as per Banking Regulation Act 1949. Look into the Next one, the interest on marginal standing facilities stipulated by RBI to banks is as per the present monetary policy, I would like to explain as per the monetary policy, a repo rate will be announced, reverse repo rate will be 1 percent less than repo rate, reverse repo rate that is when banks park their money with RBI. When banks park their money with RBI, the interest paid by RBI is a reverse repo. Reverse repo interest rate is 1 percent less than repo or 100 basis points. Please do not forget, 100 basis points means 1 percentage in banking parlance. 1 basis point is 0 0.01 percent. If CRR is increased by 50 basis points, what does it mean? CRR is increased by 0.5 percent. If SLR is reduced by 25 basis points, what does it mean? It means SLR is reduced by 0.25 percent. So, please do not forget one basis point is 0 0.01 percent and 100 basis points is 1 percent. In the monetary policy, repo rate will be announced, reverse repo will be 1 percent less. Please do not forget, repo and reverse repo both together is known as liquidity adjustment facility. Repo and reverse repo put together is known as liquidity adjustment facility and marginal standing facility interest rate is 1 percent higher than repo rate. Marginal standing facility as well as the bank rate, these two interest rates are 1 percent higher than repo rate. Right friends, look into the next one. Who was the first governor of RBI? First governor of Reserve Bank of India is uh, Osborne Smith. Osborne Smith is the first governor of uh, Reserve Bank of India and uh, the governor at the time of India's independence is uh, C. D. Deshmukh. Please do not forget. Look into the next one. How many deputy governors will be there in Reserve Bank of India? Reserve Bank of India can have a maximum of uh, four deputy governors, one governor and four deputy governors. Please do not forget. Look into the next one, benchmark rate for interbank short term market. For short term interest rates, the benchmark is repo rate. RBI announces once in two months interest rates under repo, interest rates under repo are being announced by Reserve Bank of India once in two months 
and based on the repo rate the other call market rates or call money rates in the market will vary so the benchmark rate is repo rate and all the other short term borrowings in the entire financial system will depend on the repo rate being announced by the governor of reserve bank of india once in two months so the benchmark rate for interbank short term market in india is repo rate please don't forget right friends so look into the next one regional rural banks have been set up with the basic objective of regional rural banks were set up in the year 1975 started on october to 1975 the basic purpose is providing credit deposit and other banking services to people in rural areas not only credit but also deposits and also other banking services whatever being given by all the commercial banks they are also to be given for rural masses so providing credit deposit and other banking services to people in rural areas with that intention this regional rural banks were established right in the year 1975 now the number is coming down because of mergers and amalgamations regional rural banks day by day numbers are coming down because government thought amalgamation of smaller banks is the way to achieve profitability that's why the numbers are coming down look into the next one interest up to rupees 10000 is exempted from income tax in savings bank accounts we have discussed in the lecture part savings bank accounts up to interest up to rupees 10000 is exempted from income tax please don't forget and there is no such facility for recurring deposits or fixed deposits please don't forget current account deposits do not carry any interest and two things i would like to tell you with regard to savings account deposits first thing is from 1st april 2010 interest is being calculated on daily available balance and from 25th october 2011 interest rates are deregulated by rbi that means banks are free to determine their own interest rates right friends look into the next one what is repo rate we have already discussed it is a rate at which banks borrow from rbi for short term nominee holds the money in the capacity of trustee only nominee holds the money in the capacity of trustee only trustee means he will be taking care of that money but he is not the legal owner for that money please remember x has an account y is the nominee if x dies bank will transfer that amount to y why will receive that amount as a trustee only it does not confer the right on why to utilize that amount that amount legally belongs to legal heir but bank does not look into those things banks will simply look at who is the nominee and banks will transfer that money to nominee and nominee will hold that money as a trustee only right friends look into the next one whenever rbi does some open market operations actually it wishes to regulate liquidity in the economy when rbi feels liquidity is more it will try to suck the liquidity by issuing government bonds or government securities if rbi feels that there is not much liquidity in the market what it will do it will purchase government securities and infuse liquidity into the system so open market operations is nothing but it ensures it sucks liquidity or infuses liquidity depending on the requirement for that purpose open market operations are being carried out by reserve bank of india look into the next one the concept of micro credit essentially concentrates on provision of credit to the poor people micro credit is nothing but provision of credit to the poor people and micro finance institutions are taking up micro credit 
in rural areas as banks are not able to cater to the customers in rural areas for providing micro credit and the best example is bangladesh right look into the next one capital market regulator what is capital market you are uh, investing in shares you are investing in debentures when you are purchasing 10 shares of uh, reliance industries when you are purchasing 100 shares of infosys you are investing in capital market that is capital market and securities and exchange board of india or sebi is the regulator for capital market for the banking system the regulator is reserve bank of india for capital market operations which involves shares which involves mutual funds the regulator is the securities and exchange board of india and for insurance business the regulator is irda please don't forget right friends look into the next one fda refers to foreign direct investment foreign direct investment what is the difference between foreign institutional investment and foreign direct investment and please don't forget fii is renamed as fpi foreign portfolio investment from foreign land if somebody is investing in shares as and when he wishes and takes back as and when he wishes that is foreign portfolio investment from foreign land if someone invests if some institution invests in our stock market as and when he feels and withdraws as and when he feels that is a foreign portfolio investment it is unstable and that is uncertain nobody is sure when that money will come and when that money will go that is foreign portfolio investment but foreign direct investment is investment will come from foreign land that will be invested here coca cola factory pepsi factory they are investing money here they are manufacturing foreign company volkswagen is coming they are manufacturing cars here hyundai is coming from korea they are manufacturing cars here so foreign companies coming to india for investment here and with a view to produce something that is foreign direct investment the advantage of foreign direct investment is it is more stable it brings in technology and it creates employment opportunities and it increases gdp growth but whereas foreign institutional investment is highly volatile so please don't forget fdi is foreign direct investment look into the next one what is call money it is money borrowed or let for a day or overnight if the money is borrowed for one day it is call money and if it is borrowed for 2 to 14 days it is notice money and sometimes people call it loosely as call money market to indicate short term borrowing strictly speaking call money is borrowing for one day notice money is borrowing for 2 to 14 days but in broader terms people call it as call money market when someone says call money market it is borrowing for the short term right friends look into the next one which is the first indian company to be listed in nasdaq nasdaq is the stock exchange situated in new york what is nasdaq nasdaq is national association of securities dealers automated quotations national association of securities dealers automated quotations this is one of the biggest stock exchanges in the world and it is based in new york and infosys is the company to be listed in nasdaq this is the first indian company it was listed in the year 1999 right friends look into the next one look at the news item securities and exchange board of india imposed a restriction on capital flows in equities through p notes what is p note i have taken just as an example this sentence 
to understand what is the meaning of P note. P note is a participatory note. If someone wants to invest from foreign land, they are FPIs, foreign portfolio investors, can invest in Indian stock market and FPIs are registered with the SEBI. FPIs are foreign portfolio investors, can invest in Indian stock market, they are registered with SEBI. But if someone who is not registered with SEBI wants to invest in Indian stock market, they can invest in Indian stock market through participatory notes issued by foreign portfolio investors. Foreign portfolio investors are registered with SEBI and they can directly invest in Indian stock market. But if someone wants to invest who is not registered with SEBI, he can still invest because by taking participatory note issued by foreign portfolio investor, he can still invest in Indian stock market. So, participatory notes, people feel that are the main conduits for flow of black money because whoever is investing through the issue of participatory notes, the details, the whereabouts are not known to Indian authorities. If FPIs are directly investing, everything is known because they are registered with SEBI. If someone is investing from foreign land by participatory notes, details are not known to the Indian authorities. That is why it is felt investment to Indian stock market through participatory notes is basically black money. Right? Look into the next question. Which of the following types of accounts are known as the DMAT accounts? I would like to tell you in a nutshell, DMAT accounts are the accounts which shares of various companies are traded in electronic form. Shares of various companies are traded. You can invest in various shares. You can sell at any point of time. That is a DMAT account. Bank will act as only depository. But your DMAT account is actually maintained with either NSDL or CDSL. Your DMAT account will be actually maintained at either NSDL or CDSL, but bank will act only as intermediary or you can say bank will act as depository. That is why bank is called depository participant or DP. If you are opening DMAT account with your bank, that bank is called depository participant. Look into the next one. INEFT means National Electronic Fund Transfer. Transferring money from one account to other account is possible. For small value transactions, it is NEFT. For high value transactions, it is RTGS. So, NEFT is a National Electronic Fund Transfer. We have already discussed in the lecture part in detail. Distribution of insurance products and insurance policies by banks as the corporate agents is known as bank insurance. When banks are distributing insurance products and policies, it is known as bank insurance. All of you are well aware. One more thing is LLP is one type of business form. There are various types of business forms. Business can be done through partnerships. Business can be done through establishment of uh, companies or corporations and combining both the properties of uh, partnership as well as uh, corporations. Combining both the properties of partnership as well as corporations, uh, a new method was brought in that is uh, limited liability partnership. This is uh, one type of arrangement where business can be done. Business can be done in many ways. You can start a single proprietorship firm, you can start a company, you can start a single proprietorship firm and this limited liability partnership is one type of business firm where the properties of both partnership as well as corporation are merged. Right friends, look into the next one. What is a stale check? When check completes three months from the date of issue, 
it is called a stale check it will not be useful because the maximum time a check is valid is 3 months after 3 months the check is called stale check interest on savings bank accounts are now being calculated by banks on daily available balance please don't forget interest on your savings bank accounts are being calculated on daily available balance the next question banks should resolve atm card related complaints within 7 days you visited one atm you have some grievance the money was deducted electronically but you have not got the physical cash then you have to complain you have to complain within 30 days of the occurrence and banks have to resolve within 7 days once you complained banks have to resolve within 7 days if the banks are not able to resolve beyond 7 days they have to pay daily penalty of rupees 100 to the customer so please don't forget bank should resolve atm card related complaints within 7 days uh, last question of this uh, question and answer session is nasa is the agency world famous uh, space agency of uh, united states of america right friends with this let us conclude the question and answer sessions uh, module 6 please do join for module 7 have a nice day thank you